Welcome to today's video where I'm looking at another EV charger review. We're looking today at the Omi Home Pro. Now if you're thinking of getting one of these installed, go and check out evnick.com forward slash charge. And if you're an installer or even a user thinking of getting one of these, then this review will go through everything from the install process right down to my final thoughts on what I think of this charger. Right, let's cover some basics of the Omi Home Pro. First of all, it's sold only in black. It's sold only in tethered. It comes included with the CT clamp, which can do dynamic load balancing. And they've promised me very soon on that one CT clamp, they will also do solar. So they'll be able to do solar matching depending on what your CT clamp sees very similar to other charge points it also has DC leakage protection built in and pen fault detection which means that you won't have to have any additional earthing mechanisms installed when you get this charge point now the Omi box is a fairly simple minimalist design just with the company's logo and information on the front now if we open upside the box we get quite a lot with the Omi now we'll go through this in a minute but first of all we have a Wago box here with some Wago clips for connecting up the CT clamp, which we'll explain in a minute. The CT clamp is this one here that I've already took out of the box, but on this version I have, we have this plug. On the production version, this will not be like this. It'll just be two soldered ends on the end of here, not this plug. It's just because mine's a pre-production model. We then have a bag of screws and some raw plugs for fitting it to the wall, which is nice to see. We then here have a holster with the screws for the holster, etc., to fit that. Now, now let's, let's just cut for a second while I get this out of the box and I can show everything else that's in the box without having this big box in the way. Okay, so we're back and we also have a Omi Home product manual, which is basically what you'd expect. Download the app, welcome to Omi your general stuff that to be honest majority of users will never read there's also some stuff in the in here about the rcd and earthing arrangements for the electrician now obviously it's worth mentioning the omi product has been around for a while so their software product's been around for a while but their cable product before which is a type 2 to type 2 or a granny or they did also do a war box version they didn't have pen fault detection which is why I've not reviewed that product until I waited for this. I knew this product was coming from Omi, so I wanted to wait to review this product because I believe that all products here in the UK should contain pen fault systems. And this now does contain a pen fault system, which means you won't need a separate earth rod or separate system that can handle earth, earth, earthing arrangements. This is the new one from Omi that has pen fault all built into this unit. So that is nice to see. Also the built-in RCD and DC leakage protection that the previous product already had. So all this now built into this product. On the end of here, it's worth noting that we have two cables. So we've got cable, in fact, let me just pull these apart. So we've got, let's pull them the other way around and then the right way around you can see them properly. So we've got on the right here, your type two cable and on the left here, you've got your supply cable. Now, these units come sealed from the factory. So in here, we've got the two plugs at the bottom and they are sealed in from the factory. This cable is pre-wired for you to put into a normal junction box that normal electricians are used to using. And on the end of here, we have our CPC, our line, and obviously our neutral cable. And then we have these two extra cables coming out here, a red and a gray cable, which are for the CT clamp that we mentioned before. So they go into the Wago box to clamp up, to move over to where your CT is and can be extended using Cat5 like any other CT clamp you've used before. And these are already pre-terminated at the end, ready to go into your normal junction box or Wago style terminals or whatever you're using to then connect to the main earth electric, um, you know, basically connect it up as you as you would see fit but they don't let you go inside the charge box now some engineers will prefer that because this just makes it really easy some people won't because they want a neater install and they don't want an extra junction box next to this unit outside which i understand then on the other side you've got the standard type 2 cable already pre-tethered already in already terminated as you'd expect from any other charge point now because these are sealed i can't show you inside without smashing this open but luckily someone already has done that for me and provided me with this picture that i've got on screen now and you can see that 
decent components they're using panasonic relays here like a lot of them much more expensive charge points so these are really decent t terminals that you'd expect on these really good pen fault systems at the moment just before we get to the install though on the back we have this plate and this plate here is the fixing mounting plate for screwing the charge points to the walls As an engineer you're going to love installing this you've got a simple back plate that screws to the wall you then slide the omi over and place the free screws to secure it to the wall then you have a pre-lead coming out of the unit which contains your earth your live and your cpc you can put that into a normal waterproof box that you're used to using and you also have a supplied wago box for putting in the CT clamps. And that supplied Wago box to put the CT in means that you can extend it with RJ45 or use the existing cable that came with the CT clamp. Now, once you've done that, you'll then turn the unit on and power it up. And the best part about this unit for an engineer is there's no app to install it. So you as an engineer will be over the moon about that, I'm sure, because a lot of you don't like using apps. Now, once the unit's powered up, it will take you through some basic setup. It will ask you what ampage you want the unit. Now, most people these days are going to have seven kilowatt chargers, so set that to a 32 amp system. Uh, I'm assuming that, you know, under the DNO, you'd be fine setting them both for 32 because you could use the dynamic load balancing of this charger to make it lower depending on what the main fuse is, which is why the next screen is dynamic load balancing, enable or disable. If you enable it, it'll then ask you what the max protected of that circuit is. So if it's a house with a 60 amp fuse or multiple ev charges then set that limit there hit next and then it'll do into the rcd testing now what i'm assuming is going to happen when it has solar there'll be an option to say that it has the user got solar enable or disable and that will detect which way the energy is flowing through that ct clamp to decide whether it starts charging now on the rcd test it means again the unit will be completely booted up and will be on full power for you to run your rcd checks and testing it means that you don't have to mess around with the app or mess around with any of the settings in the machine you can just test the rcd see it trip it'll reset automatically on the unit and then once you finish just press done and the unit will go into the user mode and you as an engineer can say to the customer the the, the omi system is all ready for you to scan the barcode with your app and you can disappear and you can go now assuming you've already downloaded the omi app and set up your account on omi the next thing you need to do with your phone is select that you've got a charger you'll come over to the charger and there's two qr codes on the omi there's one on the screen that will be displayed if it's never been set up before or there's one at the bottom of the unit if you look up which is a bit of an awkward position once you scan the qr code it will take you through all the setup steps now it will ask you which car you've got and there is two methods there's one if it can read your car's api which we'll move into why that's important later on in the video and then there's one if it can't read your car's api in which case it won't ask you to log into your car's detail systems once you've done that it will move over to the next process which is asking you which electricity tariff you're on now most people if i don't know if you know this but if you get an electric vehicle you can find energy from as cheap as five pence a kilowatt hour to charge during off-peak times now if you're interested in joining octopus that offer that 5p rate there's a link down below in the description or you can go to evnick.com forward slash energy now this is one part problem where i found have omi in the app they've got a small little issue which is doesn't recognize my postcode and i've been here four years so it should have you know this estate should be on there and if you don't put a space in between two parts of your postcode then it also won't search so just two little issues that they could fix with a tiny 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 bit of coding and this has been in the omi app issue for a very 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 long time it's about time that omi fixed this issue so omi i know you're watching fix it the next thing once you've set all that up the app and the machine is all ready for you to use. And this is where I think that Omi are absolutely annihilating the competition. The app that Omi have produced for me is one of the best. I think it is the best out of all the competition I've ever seen. All the competition I've reviewed, all the challenges I'm looking at, Omi has to me got the best app for someone like me who's into tech. If you're not into tech and you're not very literate and you're not very good with phones, then 
it's probably not the most easiest of apps to use there's not a lot of navigation systems you can't get standard schedule charges you can't say 9 a.m till 10 10 a.m and have that adjust your charge rate it's all integrated to work with your energy deal or what the co2 is if you're not on a special energy deal so you is take a little bit of getting used to and setting up there is some special systems in there for always charge to 70 percent every morning um on monday friday saturday sunday or all do it every week or only do it the weekend so there is some special settings in there and override rules for a little bit of safety if you are worried but if you are used to using apps you're happy to use apps and or you just want to set it up once the only will remember pretty you know quite a lot of settings in there there's things that this charger can do that nobody does in the same way and what i mean by that is that let's go for the most complicated tariff of any energy company and that is agile the prices change every 30 minutes and this charger can adjust to them perfectly now i have looked at other chargers that can do that and other chargers that i mentioned didn't do that have now decided to implement that feature since i reviewed them and said that was you know my my ballpark of a good charger this does something clever which is if you've got the api of your car programmed in for example not every mark car manufacturer is on there but majority are if you have and you've set a certain price target and it's not achievable it will tell you what the achievable target is in which given time frame you've given it so you will set the charge rate say 100 percent and you had an empty battery and you had a, a price target of 5p and the rate never dropped to 5p it will tell you you'll never reach the charge for the price target you've set so you don't wake up with an empty battery brilliant idea the next thing if you set it for a target it could reach say you said 7p and the price dropped below 7p all night on agile but it's not enough to add a hundred percent charge it's only enough to add 50 percent charge it'll tell you you will only reach 50 percent charge based on your current price target now this is brilliant especially when you move on to octopus go which is just a fixed 5p at night now if you set the 5p and your car can charge full in that time it'll you know charge full in that time but if you said um you want it to charge full and there's not enough available power in that four hour window that you get a 5p it'll tell you so you can then adjust the target to charge at the cheapest rate but allow it to charge past 5p and it will try and charge the cheapest first and then fill up the battery on the dearest part which is really 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 clever now if you've not got an api that works with the charger so it's not a login they found chances are if you email support give me your username and password their app developers will try and de develop something in the background if there's enough users of that car on the platform so they're always developing that end of the app but even if you haven't got it developed what they will do is they'll always assume your battery's empty okay so always assume zero percent and then when you drag the the icon up it will tell you what percentage it could charge to which still gives you an indication because if you get out of your car and it says 50 percent charged and the this machine says your car will go from zero to 25 percent full based on your price target you know it's going to have 25 percent so you know in the morning you're going to have 75 percent charge so it's 85 percent charge so it's it's a good guideline for even the ones that don't work with the app but the ones that work with the app make this an absolute game changer now a couple of big issues with it you obviously can't set a, a pre-schedule so we can't set charge from 1 a.m to to 2 a.m and there's like i mentioned before there is a couple of reasons why you want to do that one would be uh, octopus are running an event of free electricity or cheap like a special plunge just on for go for one week um it can occasionally happen with octopus so having that ability to maybe have that slight override more variable control than what they give you at the moment would be a useful feature that i'd like to see implemented uh, every car's not on their api again another useful feature i'd like to see implemented there's only one ct clamp and that can be an issue if you had solar and a battery because it could technically drain your battery if not set up in the same correct way and depending on how this is set up and where you've put the ct clamp but the majority of people with solar and battery is very low at the moment and as it increases you'll probably see only introduce maybe a second ct clamp at every point but that's just one small little issue the other main issue i have with it and it, this is a big one if you can't get cellular reception where you've put the charger you can't have this charger because it uses 
a SIM card only method for communication with the OMI servers. There's no Ethernet, there's no Wi Fi, there's no radio signal to an Ethernet base. It is purely cellular only. And that for me could really cause some people some problems who may want this charger and can't because of that. Easy way to check though, take your mobile phone to roughly the area you're going to be putting the charger, check that you've got some signal, you know, 3G, 4G, and if you have, then that's completely fine. Some other people have expressed issues that because it's SIM card only, what happens in four, five, six years time when the OLEV, you know, OZEV guarantees and all that's finished, will they still support, will they still pay for the SIM card? How expensive are they? And I've checked some of the data with other people I know who provide these uh, SIM card services and they are relatively cheap and the amount of data that this charger actually does consume is relatively small. We're, we're probably talking about a pound or two pound a month. So for OMI it's a relatively small cost. But the data they're getting from how you're charging, when you're charging, is quite valuable to your DNO. It's quite valuable to your energy company. And it could mean that you know they could market your data in a way to pay for that SIM card chip. And even if they charged it as a subscription, you know it would only be about £2 a month. But the way I see it going is that people like Octopus Energy or other inventive EV tariff companies will pay for the subscription on this box so they can have some control over it with your control and your permission to do a bit more vehicle response vehicle demand based charging on the charger and that will pay for the sim card now i had a big section recorded and scripted down here about what this screen doesn't do which i'd like it to do and then i found out it does do it but we'll explain that in a minute first of all we have an info button here uh, that just goes info and okay and then we've got a reboot system here the info gives you what username you've got set up with the system the charger id and the iem number of the sim card you've also got next view which currently on the screen does nothing so i will mention that i would like it to uh, work on this screen or not even just not display it and maybe give you the options of seeing the cost per charge data or some other data or even select what the charge would be when someone comes home. I'd also like to see them use this screen more for information like octopus rates uh, between this time will be the cheapest tonight. You know, just maybe some information about the tariff that they know and what they've got set. So maybe a little bit of use of information encoded onto that would be quite useful. The thing that I did write about it not doing anything was completely taken away when you plug the car in. As soon as you plug the car in, this screen does everything I hoped it would do which is you can change the target rate of the charge without using the app and it updates the app with what you've put in here and if you update the app it updates this with what the target charge you've set is that is absolutely brilliant compared to the last old OMI system where you just had the screen and the screen was tiny and it wasn't that useful this is an absolute game changer for them and it it just means that if you've got a parent that's maybe not very good at the app, but has limited understanding with how to use free buttons on a screen, you can set most of the API and charge data up for them. They can plug in and then they can select on the screen what percentage charge they'd like that night and what time they'd like it for. And they can do it all on the screen here without using the app, which just for me makes it a lot easier to use because the app for me just isn't that intuitive. The other thing on this, I feel that the layout of it is more understandable. So when you go into the information of what the car charging is cost, the layout, the way it looks on this screen is a lot nicer than the way it looks on the app. Uh, how much CO2 you've saved, that it just looks a lot neater in here. That's one thing I would like to see Omi do, just maybe try and redesign the app just a little, just to look a little bit more user friendly and a little bit less intimidating and just a little bit more guided. Um, but the way they've done this, the way they've set up this is perfect for me, absolutely perfect. Now, a couple of issues with the OMI system is if you are having this installed, remember that because this cable is pre-wired, what it will mean is that you effectively could have two boxes outside your home. You could have the charge box like this, plus another box about that size, about the size of that box, outside your home to then wire this into because this cable will come out and then the electrician will need to wire it into something. And unless you're feeding it from here through a wall into a garage, 
you're going to see that box on the outside of your house. So bear that in mind. You could have two block boxes, black boxes outside your house, identical to each other. And the second one's not going to be that big, but just, just bear in mind that you might have two, two boxes with cable coming out of. It also can't be backfed because the cable already comes out of it. So you can make it look like a backfed by just feeding it straight through the wall again. And you won't see this, uh, this loop coming out, run down your wall. And they're just two small little issues that I have with the, the possible way it's installed and the way it's designed on that. Also, this holster. Uh, few things. First of all, the, the actual cable holder um, doesn't look particularly brilliant. I, I'd like to maybe see it sprayed uh, in black or powder coat finished in black to match the charger, which is, again, brings you on to why is the handle of this not black like every other EV Type 2 cable charger. You know, again, marry it all in with the unit. It's I don't understand why it's white. And then again, this holster, which in this angle sticks out quite far it it's annoying and then also on top of that which links into this issue which is it's got a button to release a physical button that you press down to pull this out if they went for a different type holster which i've seen from another company which is angled it could mean that you could slot your charger in like that it would hold it with no button it would keep it protected from rain because it's got like a shroud on this on this other one that i'm thinking of and you just hook it out and put it in and it would just look a lot neater. I'd even possibly like to see them maybe build it into the bottom of the charger design so it, it's hooked into the bottom of there like that and the cable tidy is all part of the charger. I just think it would neaten it up quite a lot. In summary, this is a small discrete unit. It's not going to win any massive style awards but it's definitely better looking than some of its competition. It's also got a really nice small form factor but it's packed full of features. In fact, like I mentioned, it's probably for me one of the best apps for features and the way it works with the APIs of vehicles. It's also got a load of really clever tech in it like pen fault detection and DC leakage protection which means no extra auxiliary items installed at the side of your fuse box. However, because of its pre-installed cable you may have to have an extra auxiliary box on your house at the bottom where these electrical connections will go in. Have a word with your engineer. And if you haven't got mobile phone reception where this charger is going, you can't have it. But if you do have mobile phone reception where this charger may be going, then go to evnick.com forward slash charge to find an engineer and get one of these installed. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.